Well, I mean, right now, uh, every team uh, does their 30 players differently. And I am not yet finalized our 30 in-house visits yet on who those candidates will be uh, because this is early into the process. But when we get closer to that date, I'm sure you guys will trickle it out and you guys will start saying, okay, this guy visited, this guy visited, this guy visited. Where, where's the, is the number 100 now? What are you paring it down from from here? Well, I think that, um, let me see on that draft board, let's say there's uh, – no, I'd, I'd say the number is, is down really good. Hey, John, John, are you in the market for a veteran quarterback on March 14th? I'm sorry? Are you in the market for a veteran quarterback on March 14th? Well, you know, I'm, I'm research. You know, my job is to try to get the Cleveland Browns better. My job is to explore every opportunity possible to get this organization. And I will do all my hard work to try to get us as – better every day. So, you know what? I'm going to try and see, explore every opportunity. John, you admitted yesterday it might be tough to sell Cleveland on some free agents as you are right now. So you fix it. Did you agree with that? And how do you overcome that? You know what? Um, if just an example, you know, it won the hard sell for LA. It won the hard sell for Alonzo. Uh, these are just personnel guys. They aren't players, but they see the other thing. I would say no. Not if you, and not if you explain and talk about the tradition. Let's talk about the tradition. Let's talk about the passionate fan base that's here in Cleveland. I mean, why not sell those things? Why not? I mean, that's what I look at it. This is the Cleveland Browns to me. This is one of the reasons why I came here because, the, you know, because of the proud old tradition of the Cleveland Browns and the incredible fan base. John, uh, reportedly uh, visited with Vontae Davis and uh, Chris Ivory. Is, would you say in general, it's your intent to add a veteran player to each position group? No, my intent is to acquire as many good football players as I possibly can. And you know what? I did visit with both of those people. And you know what? That's, my, that's what I have to do in my position is to make sure that I can see what these people are all about. And that's what you do in these visits. John, you inherited the youngest roster in the league. Is 12 more rookies too many? Would you like to get rid of some of those picks and move up in the draft? Well, you know, that's one of those situations that we'll address when we get there. But, you know, I'll think about everything moving forward until we get up to draft day. Do you think it's important, though, to get the roster become older, whether it's through signing those free agents or whatever? I mean, we've, talk, we've, we've talked about it, but at the end of the day, you want really good football players on your team. I mean, that's what you want here. Hey, John, I wanted you to follow up on Rudy Kuntz. Obviously, it's one thing to give him an opportunity, but what did you think of the job he did once you did bring him into Green Bay? Outstanding. I think Brian's done a nice job, and he will do a nice job for the Packers moving forward. John, do you think, do you think this quarterback draft class is deep enough that if we went non-quarterback at one, there would still be a franchise to be available for? This is, I, I believe this is a, a, a very good uh, quarterback uh, draft class. Um, that's a hypothetical. That could, you know what, there could be. I mean, I've always stated I like to take, like, real football players and, depending if it's one or four and what the position is, and we're going to do what's best for this organization. You've been on both sides of the CBA since the 2011 CBA. <clears throat> Following up on the young team, very young, there's a thought out there that it's been really difficult on really young teams because of such limited contact and practice time. Do you Have you seen that in your experience, whether in D.C. or here? Well, I, I, I don't think, um, you know, what I, what, I, what I worry about is I worry about the Cleveland Browns. And I know that the teachers that we have on that staff and develop them, they are going to maximize whatever the rules are. They're going to maximize that and make them the best Cleveland Browns possible. A couple more. I cannot hear you. When you watch the quarterbacks throw at the sidelines, what can you see that you can't see? Well, it's always good to see them live. It's also just good to watch them compete against each other. But it's also at the combine an opportunity to meet them. And this is really the first time a lot of us has got a chance to meet these these players, all of these players. So that's that's what the beauty of the combine is. Have you made a preliminary ranking of your quarterbacks, the draft quarterbacks? You'll find out draft day. <laughs> John, <laughs> right now, do you have? I mean, no, I mean, you know, we, we we I mean, we've we've. We bounce things back and forth, and we have something set up. Yeah, but you know, this could change after the after the combine. Well, it could change after the pro day. It could change after a visit. I mean, there are things that it's an evolving thing, and that's why we always say it's an early part of the stage. And so, really, it doesn't matter until that draft board is set the day of the draft. John, what does uh, Scott McLuhan add to the equation for you guys, and what do you appreciate about the 
way that he specifically evaluates guys? I have a lot of respect for Scott and his ability um, as a professional. Um, he and I have known each other for a very long time. Um, there's one thing that you can never forget. Experience goes a long way in this business, and he has unbelievable experience. He's done a wonderful job of, you know, helping establish other franchises moving forward. And you know, I feel very lucky to, to you know, have Scott to come help us out here for a little while in the consulting room. John, when you find Kareem Hunt in the third round, does that? influence your thinking about you know the possibility of a running back in the top five do you think well i can get a player that good later so that's not really something i you know would be I a think, priority no i think you know this is uh I, I think this is a really good draft for running backs i think there's some very talented running backs in this thing and that's not to say whoever the first running back is taken can't be a franchise difference maker so i mean that's how you have to look at these things as well i mean if you go back at uh Gail Sayers, what was Gail Sayers' pick back in the back in the day? He was picked up really early up there, and he was a difference maker too. So I mean, it, it's it's a case by case study. John, did the Brown, everybody says uh, Minka Fitzpatrick is so versatile, like play like four or five positions. Uh, do you know what position is his best position in your defense? He's a very talented player, and I think he is one of those guys that could actually, you know, maybe he could actually play quarter. Maybe he could play safety, but I think you want to watch him move around amongst his peers today or this weekend, see how he moves and turns and twists. Um, I know he's a really good football player, and you know, whoever gets him is going to be very lucky. Do you